six and a half weeks pregnant this morning and the nausea finally hit. I was kind of hoping to avoid it. Oh, I ate some rice crackers and a baby bell cheese. And I tried drinking my coffee, but I couldn't. Brett found my coffee later and he was like, you didn't drink your coffee. And I was like, that's how you know. Like, I'm not kidding. I'm, I'm not feeling good. I would never leave my coffee. But I had a honey and ginger lemon tea instead. I'm gonna munch on a few of these and I'm heating up the frying pan to have a few eggs and try and get some protein in so that I'm not uh, spiking and crashing my blood sugar too much by just eating carbs, which can also contribute to nausea, so. It's all good. I send so my ready to go. <laughs> Ice and snow, we're ready to go. Me, me. You want to hold it? I want to hold it. Okay, you're gonna, <laughs> you're gonna turn it around. Here. I present to you what I think I'll be able to stomach for lunch. Okay, here's what I'm gonna try and eat for breakfast this morning. I haven't been able to drink coffee lately. That's the real crime. And Brett is cooking bacon in the kitchen right now. And I came here, I came into our bedroom to eat breakfast because I can't even stand the smell of that right now and usually I love it. Seven and a half weeks. Hopefully this will pass in like another four weeks. It's Saturday, thank goodness. I can hear the sounds of a Duplo party happening in the living room and I'm just gonna lie here. I can't watch anything because screens make me feel not hot either but Maybe I'll find a good podcast or something. He found me. He found me! <laughs> Let's eat it. Okay, you eat one now. No, you eat this one. Eat this one. No, hold it. Oh, hold it, okay. Hold it. Cheers. My eat it all. <laughs> you bite it. You bite the rats, mommy. <laughs> like a what? Rats. This is so you. This is so you, mommy. This is so you. This I gotta finish this one first. Kay. You eat that one. My dad needs the sun. Are you gonna take a bite of one? Oh, it's two, mommy. There's two? There's two in the camera. Two in the camera, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Where'd yours go? My tummy. <laughs> Your tummy. <laughs> he ate my nose. Give me my nose back! Yeah, I would try like half a cup of coffee. Please. Uh, did you bring me my nose back? No. <laughs> Not catch me. <laughs> catch you? Get back here. Okay. Let's see if I can make a quick little recipe video. So something that I have been drinking for an upset stomach is ginger lemon tea or sometimes I make it into a cold drink. I make a concentrate and that's what we're gonna make today. And it's actually just two ingredients, ginger and lemon. Well, and water, so kind of three, but I feel like water always gets left out as an ingredient. Supplies wise, we are gonna need a few more things. So we're gonna need a blender, cutting board, 
big soup size spoon. I'm gonna need a strainer, like a fine, a fine mesh strainer, kind of like this. You could probably use a nut milk bag, but I don't know if you make, if you actually make a lot of nut milks in it, I don't know if you want any ginger going in there, even if you wash it. Also, I'm gonna try freezing this concentrate today. So grab a few ice cube trays too. I haven't frozen it before. I keep it in this glass little one liter milk bottle and I just keep it in the fridge. I'm gonna peel this ginger a little bit, not all the way, but just for food safety right now, I'm gonna take the peel off of it and then also wash it, but you don't have to. You, this is really just personal preference. The trick that I've learned for peeling ginger is with a spoon and you're just going to drag it along the skin like this. Already smells so good. And the peel just comes off so easy with a spoon. Probably cut these little rooty knobby parts off with a knife. So I'm gonna go rinse it. I'm using the back of my knife to scrape the cutting board so that I don't dull my knife. Okay, and then I'm going to just kind of cut it into big chunks and there's really, it's gonna get blended up a bunch anyways, so you're just kind of making it a little bit smaller. So we're gonna pulse it up a bunch and you can do this in any blender or a food processor if you have. that will be watery enough. So I'm gonna put the strainer over top and I'm going to pour this blended gingery stuff into the strainer. And here's the most important part. You're going to use that big spoon to press into the ginger puree and get the rest of the juice out of it. <laughs> okay, and that can go in the compost too. Look how much ginger concentrate we have. Now I'm going to juice a lemon. Do I need to make a tutorial on that? I am gonna wash it first. Look at all this pretty yellow. But you know, juice a lemon. However your favorite style is. Or if you don't have a fresh lemon, but you do have some lemon juice in your pantry or in the fridge, then use that. Okay, I'm gonna pour this into this so that I have a little spout for pouring it into the ice cube tray. So we'll wait for those to freeze. I showed you every single little step of making those, so it might seem like a lot right now, but I've made them a few times now, and once you've done them, you can just make them super fast. Just chop up ginger, put it in the blender, add a little bit of water, squish it through the filter, add lemon juice, and then you don't even have to make it into ice cubes. You can just keep it fresh in the fridge, I would say like for four, five, six days, 
And then you're just gonna add a few tablespoons to a mug and pour hot water over it, or it's a really yummy concentrate to add with sparkling water. Oh, and when I make the ginger lemon tea, I always add a little bit of raw honey to it to sweeten it a bit because it is a bit spicy sour. And it's really, it really helps for nausea, but it's also really good for flu, cold, like anything in your throat, or if you're just feeling a little bit under the weather, you just wanna warm up a little bit. So let me know if you make it for the first time after watching this. P.S. Quick extra bonus tip for leftover lemons, like spent lemons after you've juiced them, is descale your kettle with them. Um, you guys, if you're living in a city, you probably don't have as much scale build up as we do. This is just like a week's worth. Um, but you, do, you do get build up over time in the city, but all you're gonna do is throw your lemons in there and then fill it up a little bit with water and run the kettle. And I, like out here, have been like letting them soak in that hot water for a little while. But if you're in the city, like we, we did this all the time in the city and you're probably not gonna have to have them soak at all. It'll probably just be clean after that. So yeah, give it a good rinse after that. Do not make coffee or tea with lemon water. Uh, tea might be okay, but coffee is like, we've done that far too many times. We didn't always have a clear kettle. We had a metal one and you couldn't see inside it. So we would like boil some lemons and then forget about them. So our new rule with descaling the kettle um, with vinegar too, especially because even with a clear kettle, if you're using vinegar, you can't tell that it's not water. Uh, if you're descaling the kettle, do it all the way. Start to finish, don't walk away, or put a little note on it or something so that you don't waste a whole batch of coffee on lemon water. 